Hello and welcome to another episode of Another Look, our news and review podcast, where we review news that's been going on across the northern Shenandoah Valley over the course of the last week. I'm Dylan Nichols, your news director at the River 95.3 and Sports Radio 1450. She is Janet Michael, host of The Valley Today. <coughs> Janet, award-winning <coughs> Valley Today. <laughs> Janet... <laughs> doing uh, so well you had been saying it no, it was rolling off no, the dog because i'm endeavoring not to say it on purpose like i in a, or on accident rather i don't want to be the pavlonian dog that's trained <laughs> to say award-winning i don't want it to be in my microchip brain well you just remember that you know if you ever win if yeah. you ever win an award i will be your shot. biggest fan and correct you if you don't say i'm your award-winning news director but that's okay because if you don't want to, you know, isn't it a bit? Give me the props. That's that's fine. I I, I you know I understand. Isn't it bad a tad bit gauche no. for me as news director if I win an award to say I'm an award winning news director? No. I think. It How is. many times have you heard me say I'm an award winning radio show host? Well, Janet, that might <laughs> yeah. be my point. I think it's exactly. all in the tone. It's all in. Well, you know. that's true too. That's true yeah. too. Yeah, and I listen to podcasts all the time that reference award-winning shows, and I'm an award-winning podcaster, and, you know. Janet, I think it's a tad gauche. I don't care. I, I, I also love the word gauche. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting outside a French it? cafe. G-A-U-C-H-E, right? Yeah. So you uh, can spell that, but you can't spell Gretchen. Yeah. I had trouble with that earlier today. I used the Eastern European spelling <laughs> of Gretchen and replaced an E with a Y somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then that led uh, us down the rabbit hole of DNA tests and everything else. But we won't bore you with all that. We won't we have, bore you with we the We have enough news to bore you with. And oh, we don't need to tell you about all of that stuff. So much news. So much news. Uh, well, on my side of things, I cannot wait to talk about uh, the Winchester City Council Ward 4 <laughs> thing because that finally got resolved. And it started at the top of the week and the bottom of the week. They both be- – the week began and ended with news about the City Council Ward 4 thing. And Thank you done. for not leading with the hepatitis story. <laughs> no, we'll get to the hep. Oh, Dilly, we'll get to the hep. Um, I also want to talk about uh, the CTB approving uh, plans for ID1. CTB? What does that stand for? That stands for Commonwealth Transportation Board. Ah. Yeah, that's right. So what they're – and what they're going to do with that approval now and what the next step is and – we're also going to talk about, that's right, you heard Janet right, the HEP. <laughs> There's more HEP news happening across the Shenandoah Valley. Stay tuned for that. Janet, what do you yes, have? Yes, and it doesn't involve you having the HEP. It does that's not the, involve the, me the other part the of the breaking news. No, it's a clean, healthy dilly. And by the way, in case you listened. <laughs> oh, you got to stop saying dilly. Oh, man, that Bud Light commercial is like metastasized into this awful innuendo. Oh, my goodness. And in case uh, you you missed the episode Dilly's Got the Hep, yep. or in case you were listening to the episode Dilly's Got the Hep, and you heard that I might have hepatitis A because the gas station I frequent, <laughs> one of their workers had hepatitis A. No symptoms. No jaundice. I don't look any yellower. <laughs> I I feel great. I feel like a million bucks. I feel yeah. like uh, I could, you know, I don't know, do something. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. I feel great. <laughs> So, so I'm all I'm all good. But Janet, how I'm are you? Sleep so much better tonight. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad. Janet, how are you? And what are you covering? I want to talk about schools mm. and peoples. Broad subject. So all that and more. <laughs> when we come back, can you can you laser in on that? Well, end? Frederick County Public Schools, my alma mater of sorts, um, has named their 12th elementary school. I know that they had sent that out to the public, and they had a school naming committee, so they've decided on what that name's going to be. Um, the vacant Frederick County Middle School is still for sale, or has gone back up for sale with quite a price slashing. Wow. Um, which is kind of interesting. So I want to talk to you about how we could budget to maybe buy it. Um, and then I want to talk about this construction <laughs> that's happening on a Middletown housing development that is literally within walking distance of my house. And I have some serious issues with it. Shocking. I know. You you have issues with everything. I can't wait to see if you have issues with the, the school name. I can't wait to see. I, have you looked at you. it yet? I'm, yes, I have. And I am not going to tell you. Oh, uh, well, well. Wait, you're not going to tell me at all? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you now. You, we, we'll wait. Stay we'll build tuned. suspense. <laughs> Stay uh, tuned. Somebody, a, a news guy once told me something about building tension and how important. Yes, that's right, Janet. That's correct. I was that news guy. <laughs> and uh, building tension is so important. Yeah. It's so important. You have to, you, you have to insert a prickle in the back of their minds, <laughs> a, an itch they can't scratch. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, there's tension every time I walk into this newsroom to do this <laughs> podcast with you every week. So I think that's sufficient. You never, you never know how the dilly is going to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that, and with that. And with that. <laughs> Uh, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to cover all those stories, and we're going to have some dumb news, national, international. Mine's international. I don't know if yours is. Yeah, well, I have two. I haven't decided yet. One's pretty gross, and one's holiday-related, so maybe I'll have you just randomly pick one, and, and I'll save the other one for next week. I'm leaning really gross, but we'll see We'll see what my mood is when we're done with all these <laughs> stories. All that more when we come back with some more Another Look. It's an award-winning lunch hour every day at noon with the News at Noon and Valley Today. Listen live on air, online, or on demand at theriver953.com. That's theriver953.com. Hello, it's Janet again. In addition to producing podcasts for The River 953 and our clients, I also host a show every weekday on the air from 1230 to 1 called The Valley Today. It's a community conversation where I chat with local business owners, nonprofits, government agencies, and residents about what's happening up and down the Shenandoah Valley. You can hear the show live each day on the radio, you can listen live from our website, or you can listen to the podcast of the show each afternoon on our website at theriver953.com from the Valley Today page. You can even subscribe to the podcast in the Apple Podcast app or the Google Play Music Store and have it delivered directly to your phone once it's published. So join me for a conversation this week. And if you're interested in being a guest or advertising in that podcast, send me an email to Janet at the river 953com And now back to the podcast. Hello and welcome back to some more Another Look, where we're going to be going over some stories now. Are we? we? Uh, yeah, yeah. I Is that why we're, we're here? I, th- I think that might be here. Uh, that we were just talking about before the break. Um, do you want to go first? Should I go first? You go first. Oh, okay. Well, we got to talk about this McKiernan Taylor beef. <sighs> oh, man. All right. So, in case you weren't aware, uh, in the November election that took place, uh, I mean, it was a in nationwide November. election <laughs> in November, the November election from November in November. Uh, it was a nationwide election, a bunch of congressional elections, but there were also a lot of local elections going on, and Winchester City Council had some seats that were up for grabs. Now, among those were the Ward 4 seat. It was the Ward 4 seat, and running for that seat was Republican candidate Deborah Taylor and Democrat candidate Judy McKiernan. And Judy McKiernan squeaked out a win by three votes. And that was crazy. I mean, Three the, the, the um, news channel four out of D.C. actually covered a portion of those results and said, and in you know Winchester, Virginia, their city council race yeah. is separated by just three votes. And I'm like, oh, I know them. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. me. <laughs> the gods deigned to look down on us hey. that uh, yeah, you know, we attracted some attention. So uh, basically since then, there's been a, there was a question over whether or not Deborah Taylor would file for a recount. It is her right to file for a recount paid for by the city and taxpayers if the vote falls within a margin of 0.05% between their two ballot tallies. And uh, it sure enough, it did with those three votes. Um, she said she was going to wait uh, until some outstanding ballots were either counted or not counted. They're called provisional ballots. Right. And it's basically if people um, are missing information, like missing voter registration information. So they're they not moved, sure if they can count so their ballots not or not. Show, yeah. yeah. So in other words, the, the vote is it has been cast, but it's not clear whether or not it's valid. Um, it, no one really followed up on those. Uh, and so their time elapsed for that and they ended up not doing it in time. So the provisional balance didn't end up being a factor. It was still three votes. And, uh, Taylor decided to go ahead and file for the recount. Now, when you file for a recount, you have, uh, you have 10 days, uh, after the election, I believe to file for the recount and another 10 days after that to serve your opponent with the petition filing papers documents uh and that i i believe that that is supposed to be done by somebody from the winchester city sheriff's office so she says i want a recount fills out a form and officially says i want a recount but then also is responsible for notifying her opponent that she has requested a recount. That's not something the voter registrar's office does in the city of Winchester? Well, so now this is the thing. So she to file the petition for the recount, she has to go to Winchester Circuit Court. Okay. Now, it, what she did when she went to Winchester Circuit Court was she went to the clerk of court or, or the clerk's office there. Mm-hmm. And it, once the petition was filed, she said, can you send this to Judy McKiernan? And this is this is her story that's been reported around. Okay, 
And then basically it, she says that somebody said, yes, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll do that for you. And it never happened. Ooh. It, and we don't know who in the clerk's office or if this actually happened in the clerk's office and they were asked and they said that they would. Um, the other part of that is another r- report that I read said that this actually – the actual like delivery of the papers to the opposing candidate has to be done by somebody from the Winchester City Sheriff's Office. Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. So – it, there's a lot of different layers to how this filing is done properly, but it, no matter who's at fault or what happened, it wasn't done properly. Uh, McKiernan was not notified and did not receive like the petition papers or whatever she needed within the 10-day deadline. Uh, I think I believe it was something like four days afterwards she got it. And as a result, Harrisonburg Judge Bruce D. Albertson ruled to dismiss the petition oh. altogether and basically just dismiss the recount and declare Judy McKiernan the winner. Now, uh, basically, they wanted that ruling rejudged because so they appealed it exactly because they 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 did not agree with this ruling. And the way that the it is reviewed after a repeal like that is a three judge panel was convened, and Bruce D. Albertson, I guess, explained his position and why he ruled as he did to judges Louise DiMatteo of Arlington and Kimberly A. Irving of Prince William County. Um, they convened, I believe it was Wednesday. I think that's the date I have here. And the result of that was that they agreed with him. They agreed with his ruling. Um, it's cut and dry in terms, I think it's pretty cut and dry in terms of she delivered, uh, the petition got delivered to McKiernan or notice that the petition got delivered to McKiernan after the deadline. Right. And that's it. Um, it, Taylor's lawyers arguing that it was an error within the clerk's office and was not Taylor's fault and is saying that this isn't right and it's not fair. But at the end of the day, they, they appealed it. Uh, it got knocked down. And so what this means is that McKiernan is officially in. Uh, the win by three votes has been upheld just because uh, basically on procedural grounds, mm-hmm. the recount was dismissed altogether. Well, and I mean, if I am in a race – and I have lost uh, semi-officially by three votes, and I know this is the process, I'm not 100% sure that I'm just going to take the word of some dude or chick that's standing behind the counter at the clerk's office to do something that they're saying they're going to do. I'm going to get their name. I'm going to ask for a copy of what it is they're going to, you know, I'm not so sure. I'm just going to leave that, you know, in the wind. I, I would have gone every step myself yeah it's true so, i mean i'm it, not sure i want a council member who likes to like you know <laughs> not dot her eyes and cross her teeth so yeah, kudos i mean to McKiernan. <laughs> and then that's a point too it might be for the best overall because it, there, there are you want to be as assured as possible that right. this was uh, given to the other candidate and you you want to be as thorough as possible could be an indicator there that as to what kind of council woman should be i don't know about that um but overall, I'm, I'm just kind of happy it's resolved. It's yeah. been kind of lingering for a while. It, it, it's been one of those stories that just won't go away. And the deadline's been coming sooner and sooner. I mean, January 1st is when she begins. And so we need to know who she is. So I, <laughs> I'm i glad we have a she. It's uh, it's fantastic. Well, it was going to be a she either way because Deborah yeah. Taylor is also a she. No, I know. In case you didn't know that. Yeah, I, I, I was okay. aware. Oh, okay. I picked up on the fact that Deborah seemed to me a female name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I did the math in my head, the mental calculus. The other thing I want to talk about is, and this is big, the Commonwealth Transportation Board uh, approved an ID1 improvement plan. Woo-hoo. The reason this affects us, I mean, obviously you're thinking ID1, like, wow, that, what a mess, and that affects us every single day. And of course we want an ID1 improvement plan. But I mean, Frederick County in particular has really had to fight for the improvements it wants in its area of ID1. Because I-81 is 325 miles long going up and down Virginia, and that's Virginia's portion of I-81, and it's just it, – it, it, there's a lot that needs work. To say it's a hot mess does not begin to describe the conditions, yes. both infrastructure-wise, you know, physically with the shape of the road, as well as the amount of traffic mm-hmm. and truck traffic that travels that road every single day. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. And case in point, it, we had an accident just this week as well that happened Monday night at 11.20 p.m. A Ford Explorer rear-ended a 2014 Freightliner Cascadia tractor-trailer truck. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, it exploded on impact and killed the man. I mean, every 
I mean, every parent's worst nightmare because I, I went to college at JMU and I live up in Nova area. So I would have to travel up and down to 81 every time I wanted to go back to the house. Um, every time there was a holiday and a, so many kids do in young college age, um, and if you live in this area, chances are that if you just get your learner's permit, you could end up on 81. And oh, it's yeah. just – it's everyone's nightmare that this might happen. We need to reduce congestion. We need more safety uh, procedures in place. Um, and we, reducing congestion isn't just about convenience and getting from point A to point B. It's also about making sure that you're not in a situation where you're that close to a Freightliner Cascadia's yeah. rear bumper. Well, and and, it's, and, It was late at night, so you don't know if the guy fell asleep too or what other extenuating it, yeah, circumstances. Yeah, it could have been any but, number. But, I mean, the, the on-ramps and the off-ramps mm-hmm. in this area in particular are very short and in some cases merge into – other lanes like when you're coming off of 66 in the area of where that explosion happened when you're coming from front royal and you're heading to winchester and you're on 66 and merge on to 81 traffic is at full speed yeah on 81 this isn't merging into 45 mile an hour traffic this is merging into traffic that is already doing 75 probably even because the speed limit is 70 yeah, yeah, so, it, it, no, it's it's yeah. absolutely And then insane. going back the other way, people are merging off of 66 to head south into Strasburg and, and through Shenandoah County. That merge lane is on the left. It's not mm-hmm. even on the right where it's, in theory, slower traffic. It's in the passing lane that it's merging into. And like so, I'm saying, like I went to JMU, that was my merge yeah. right there. And it, I mean, it, it made me nervous every time I was oh, approaching yeah. it because you, you just don't know. It's not the longest merge lane. They no. give you sp- and some it's space. it's blocked. You can't see until you – because in some cases yeah. you can see as you're coming down the off-ramp and you're in the merge lane. You can look behind you and see is there anything coming. You can't hear because there's an embankment and there's actual you know grass and, and like a little hill in the way. So until yeah. you're in that spot where you can actually start to physically merge, you don't know what's there. You can't see anything. Yeah. Uh, so it's you don't know what to be prepared for and chances are it's a bunch of semis coming yes. your way, hurtling in the fast lane past this exit. So – it's a nightmare. It needs work. Now, what Frederick County was fighting for in particular uh, with the improvement plan was uh, basically an additional lane between exits 313 and 317, which they identified as a huge problem mm-hmm. area. That's where the ball is. Mm-hmm. And the the issue that they were having with that is, you know, VDOT was doing its analysis. They were working in conjunction with a, a couple different organizations. And in their study, they identified it as a priority area, but it was a priority area that they would not be able to fund in the near future. Um, because their budget changed, and so they were basically saying, hey, look, we it's not going to happen in the near future, but it's on our priority list, and it will happen eventually. I heard the year it, it could have taken as late as 2060 yeah. to, to get done, like some ridiculous year like that where we're all going to be George Jetson anyways. Yes. So. Well, and I think that's what some one of the, the people in Frederick County made the comment, well, we're going to be in flying cars by then, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. irrelevant. Or, or at least like self-driving cars. Yeah. Oh, where, where man, tr- I can't wait for self-driving cars. I can't either. Everyone else hates the idea of them. I I love it. Me too. Let's get some I, self-driving yes, cars. I can text. I, there are yep. so many things I'm going to be able to do when I don't have to drive. Oh, be, it would be yeah. so relaxing too to just uh, – well, I don't know about relaxing, back. but I won't be paying attention, so it won't matter. I won't be freaked out. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I open the paper up, you know, read a little bit, <laughs> uh, you know, read some Tolstoy as I often do on my commutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what you're going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But it's uh, – so it, they – basically an announcement was made semi-recently a few weeks ago that where they said, yeah, we're going to be able to include that in the plan overall. Now that plan's been approved by the, the CTB. So now what it's going to do is the CTB is going to submit its findings to the General Assembly prior to the first day of the 2019 session. And now the General Assembly of the state of Virginia is going to get into it, um, which will be – so we – We've gone through a lot of hurdles. Yeah. And we've made a lot of progress. Now it comes down to the money and whether the Virginia Assembly is going to approve the amount of money VDOT's probably asking for overall, which then by default gives us what we want because that's in the big pot. And, you know, from a from politics standpoint, <laughs> I mean, infrastructure and education, those are pretty much like winner bills. Yeah. It's, it's hard to find somebody that won't want to get behind that and say, I helped to clean up 81. Yes. So – Hopes are high. I'm I'm excited. We're running a little long here, but I just want to touch on this VDH announcement that came out this week about hepatitis A. You might remember from one of our last podcast episodes that we were talking about hepatitis A in the Apple Mountain gas station in Linden. In Warren uh, County, yep. Yes. A worker there in mid-November was handling food and was making made-to-order ready food, and uh, he 
or she was later diagnosed, oh, you have had hepatitis A for this period that you've been working here. It was about a two-week period. You can check out the article on our website, theriver953.com, um, if you're not familiar with this and if you're around that gas station at that time. Uh, so the VDH was issuing warnings about that. This is not related to that. This is a completely different hepatitis A warning. And apparently a lot of people in Winchester area and Clark area. In a completely area, different state. <laughs> yes. A lot of people in Winchester area and Clark area were worried that there was a hepatitis A outbreak in the Winchester area. And they started spreading it around the social media, trying to get the word out, trying to warn each other. And the VDH has to, which is the Virginia Department of Health, had to fight back against these rumors because they're saying, no, there's no hepatitis A in Winchester, Virginia. The hepatitis A that you're talking about uh, was rumored to be in an Applebee's in Winchester, Kentucky. <laughs> so a little confusion there. Um, Winchesterites or Winchestertons or whatever we call you. <sighs> you are safe. Winchesteronians. Winchesteronians. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. Yeah, what, what is that? A Chef Boyardee uh, <laughs> creation? I don't, yeah, Winchester Onions, you are safe. Uh, no hepatitis A to worry about. So that's all good. It, it's about time for a break, but when we come back, we're going to get into Janet's stories. Uh, she's got some school stuff she wants to talk about, this naming of the 12th elementary school. We'll see if she agrees or disagrees after the yeah. break. And we're also going to talk about this Middletown housing development. I think Janet's got a few issues with that one. So we're going to have to see what that looks like in her mind <laughs> when we come back with some more Another Look. Hello, it's Janet again. In addition to producing podcasts for The River 953 and our clients, I also host a show every weekday on the air from 1230 till 1 called The Valley Today. It's a community conversation where I chat with local business owners, nonprofits, government agencies, and residents about what's happening up and down the Shenandoah Valley. You can hear the show live each day on the radio, you can listen live from our website, or you can listen to the podcast of the show each afternoon on our website at theriver953.com from the Valley Today page. You can even subscribe to the podcast in the Apple Podcast app or the Google Play Music Store and have it delivered directly to your phone once it's published. So join me for a conversation this week. And if you're interested in being a guest or advertising in that podcast, send me an email to Janet at the river 953.com. And now back to the podcast. It's an award winning lunch hour every day at noon with the news at noon and Valley Today. Listen live on air, online, or on demand at the river 953.com. That's the river 953.com. All right, welcome back to some more Another Look. And we're into the Janet segment Woo-hoo! of the Northern Shenandoah Valley News, where she's going to take us through some school developments. Yep. A school for sale, a school named. And Peoples. She's going to talk about of Peoples. Them. Too many people. You want to start with the Peoples? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like to start? Well, I want to start with um, this vacant Frederick County Middle School that is for sale, apparently at half its value. Well, and that's up for dispute, but continue. Yes. Yeah. But first, I want to take you on a little walk down memory lane. I love Because memory I know lane. that even though we all work here at a very small community radio station, mm. nobody listens to what any of us actually say or do when we're on our on-air shifts. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. And uh, yesterday, on Thursday... I had Nathan Stalvey as my guest on the Valley today. He is the director, executive director of the Clark County Historical Association. Yeah. And we talked about a building that's for sale in Clark County. Oh. Carter Hall. Now, Carter Hall is the former location of Project Hope. I've actually been in Carter Hall years and years and years ago. Beautiful, beautiful historic old building. Yeah. It's for sale for $12 million. It's, I mean, worth every penny. I mean, you look at that place and you're like, whoa. I asked Nathan on the air if he wanted to go have these with me. As it turned out, he checked his bank account during a break. He just didn't have the money. I, I mean, that happens occasionally. And I got to say, a little it's embarrassing. The holidays. A little embarrassing, but it is the holidays. Yeah. So that it, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then I see this article on our website that the vacant Frederick County Middle School is for sale for half its value. Now, there is nothing I love more than something on clearance. And, uh, and that's more our speed, I would say. It yeah. kind of is because it sits up on a hill. Yeah. I went to that school. Yeah. It wasn't the middle school then. It was still a junior high, which is what really matters. <laughs> Same and diff. it's on sale for $3.95 million. That doesn't even Nothing. have like Nothing. a double digit before the decimal. That's not even my electric bill. That's not even my electric bill. And just imagine. I mean, that's a complex. It has a gym. That's what you need. 
You could go yeah. into the gym and do yeah. your little yoga stretches before you do that running and thing. And then go running, do. and then I you know, I could just do it lap a track. Oh, I'm you all over that. You could run around the track. Yeah, it like a, a gerbil full in a wheel. size cafeteria. Do you know how many coffee makers I could line up in a full size cafeteria? I would never yeah. have to make. I could make coffee once a day. We could, in ten different coffee makers and be set. We could make, and I'm going to suggest to Andrew that we get a government grant for this. <laughs> we could make the most bloated, <laughs> nonsensical radio station in that building. Yeah. We just need a easy, a cool yeah. four mil from yeah. the U.S. of A. government. That's half price. That's fifty percent off. That is That's a deal. Nothing. Yeah. And we just need a full time cafeteria staff to make us whatever we want. Yeah. Um, I need a trainer. And um, I don't know. You want anything? Yeah, I mean, while we're uh, buying? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I probably will. I mean, yeah. you know. I want to clarify something about that story. Because when we were covering that, covering that earlier, I think they were trying to sell it earlier. And don't quote me on this, but I think they were trying to sell it earlier at its appraised value appraised by the city of like around $8 million. Right. Um, and it, the reason – Assessed value apparently. And I've learned this value. recently. Assessed value and appraised value are apparently two entirely okay. different things. So you're right. So the assessed value was eight point something million dollars. Two. Eight point two million. Eight point two million dollars. Now, I think it was recently, however, appraised after that assessment and found to be much, much – I want to say like just over four mil in value. Uh. And so now they're selling it for less and I think it's a reflection of that – uh, a s- appraisal and i ha- would have to go back and check on that but i'm pretty sure that's what's going on there but i do you remember also we were talking about how valley health made an offer and yes. we were like the offer was like fifty thousand dollars we're like what <laughs> well i've been reading reports since i have like clarified that and made it clear that they didn't offer fifty thousand dollars they offered fifty thousand dollars i believe it was above the highest bidder there you go. Nobody bid. But nobody bid. So it was above zero dollars, which was the highest bid. So it was fifty thousand dollars <laughs> technically. But Valley Health was not being like the O'Doyle no. in the room and just you know bullying the guys and everything. Yeah. And, and this is close to Valley Health's complex. So yeah. they, they really could benefit from it. Now but- I'm not sure though. I mean, it says here it's twenty three acres. That's the other thing. It's it's got a ton of land. It has yeah. a huge parking lot. You know all that kind of stuff. And the value is mostly in the land, is what yeah. they're saying. Um, but it sits. It, it's zoned low de- density residential, which is a designation that allows for building single family dwellings, churches, group homes, or fire and rescue stations. So I'm not sure. Valley Health as an oh. office or what they would have done there would have they would have had to change the zoning. I think we as a radio station would fall into the existing zoning because fire and rescue is emergency. We're kind of technically emergency and it's up on a hill we could put a tower there. And honestly, it, and then again, let Chantel come and do their cell service. <laughs> those guys are great. And, and again, if we get this federal funding, which I'm sure we will, um we we since we're already in the federal government Quick executive order from the president. Yeah. It's zoned whatever we need it to be zoned. Done. Boom. Yeah. We we yeah. own the land. I loved my years at Frederick County Junior High. As you a matter like of fact, the one and only time I ever skipped school in the true sense of snuck out in between classes yeah, and didn't hokey. go back. Yeah. I was at Jameswood Amherst Street, um, which is down the hill from Frederick County. And I literally skipped out of Jameswood to go back to Frederick County Junior High and see some of my friends that were still up there. Oh. So I like skipped one school so you were a to freshman basically in high school. break into another school and hang out with my friends in the hallways during their classes. You were like a freshman that missed the eighth graders kind of a thing? I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's sweet. That's yeah. a good way to skip school. Yeah. They never did find out. So, um, yeah. I'm You're pretty sure clear, that man. all my principals are dead now, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and on that lovely note, <laughs> tell us about, speaking of youth, tell us about yes. this 12th elementary school. And can we first just talk about the fact that, holy crap, 12 elementary schools. Good Lord. How yeah. many people live in Frederick County with little kids? <laughs> well, and, and uh, thank you, Jeff Bezos. That number is probably going to get bigger. Oh, uh, well, that's true, too. Yeah. yeah. So they have decided on a name. Mm. I think we talked about this briefly in a previous episode of one of our podcasts when they had several names. They were thinking about naming it after people and they were going to name it after landmarks. You were and... very you were very picky when we were in that episode. So I'm yeah. curious to say, well, why don't you tell them what the name is? And so then... the name they have chosen is Jordan Springs Elementary School. All right. Now, Janet, on a scale of zero to ten, how many stars? I give it 10 stars. You give it 10 stars. I am in total Janet agreement. Janet is a... Uh, we've done it, people. We've done it. We, yeah. 
We we've crash landed Apollo thirteen. I you know we've, I am all in favor of naming schools based on where they're located and what is around them. Yeah, it just makes more sense yeah. because I mean just look at all of these schools that are named after these Union and Confederate soldiers. Look at these schools that are named after people that we thought were great that then all of a sudden these skeletons come rolling out of their closet and you name schools after people and I get that in the in the the present time, you do that as an honorarium. Mm-hmm. 20 years from now, those kids ain't got any idea who those people are. So just name it for where it's at. Just keep it generic. I also think that there's you can take more pride in your school when, when it is regionally named. Because yes. it, it's it's unique. There is no other school like this because yeah. it's named after this particular region, this little corner of the world yeah. that we know. And they can pick any mascot they want now. It doesn't yeah. have to be based on, you know, and, and I say that as a James Wood high school graduate and our mascot is the colonel. So mm-hmm. James Wood colonels, I get that. But they can be bears or turtles or hawks or they could be anything. They don't have to be animals. They could yeah. be like, what, what, what? I don't know. what, what, what yeah. Like like mythical creatures or something? Yeah. What, what would you pick for a mythical creature for Jordan Springs Elementary School? I don't know. What's that thing? You're also assuming what's, that. What's that animal in, in the Harry Potter movie that has the three heads that they had hidden in the top of that building and it just like ah, and had the three heads and, and the kids had to like get around yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it, that was, thing. it was like from Greek mythology or something. Yeah. yeah. That, that thing. Because, you know. Okay. That thing. That would make other kids in other elementary schools run for their lives. Yeah. <laughs> so they would call them the Jordan Springs three-headed dogs. Yes. Is what they would call that team. There you go. Janet, you're ge- – why aren't Everybody you on wins. this board? Why I, aren't you I on know. this school board making yeah. these decisions? I don't get it. I'm telling you, man. Reach I out to me. I don't get it. I got a lot of free time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. Where did that even come from? <laughs> oh, man. You didn't – oh, man. All right. So we, yeah. now what else do – we've also got now this Middletown development, right? Yes. Janet, explain to the listeners. It is literally within walking distance from my house. Is it really? It is. Is it really? Yes. Oh, see, I was I, I was reading and I was kind of thinking to myself, like, I wonder how close that is to Jan. Yeah. It is across from the college, which makes sense. It's the only real open piece of land mm-hmm. in Middletown proper mm-hmm. um, that something like that could be built on. Um, but it is, uh, they've been clearing the land forever. I mean, they've been knocking down the trees and, and pushing around dirt and, and that sort of thing. It's going to be called, and these people need to take a name, take a page out of the school people's books, The Village. At Middletown. That makes me think of M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Well, village doesn't necessarily imply 180 single-family dwellings, over 80,000 square feet of commercial space, and 22 apartments. And depend- Village? Yeah. And depending really? on how cookie-cutter they all are, too, it's not going to look very much like a village. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It's, it's a... You see village, you think of a Christmas village, you think of Elf. Yes. yes. You think of these cute little places that are all within walking distance, like a downtown area. Yeah. Yeah, Tudor-style little homes yeah. and like a bunch of, you yeah. know. We couldn't even get houses. a Popeye's in Middletown. And yet, 180 people are going to move there. Are you petitioning for a Popeye's? We were at one point. There was a really? there was a conversation that Popeye's was going to move in in this little convenience center um, storefront across from the college. You would think wow. with Lord Fairfax Community College, one of the fastest growing community colleges in the state of Virginia. Well, now, but now hold on a second, because what does every franchise that's considering coming to this area say when they come to this area and they say, ah, oh, we can't do it. We need more roofs. Get more people, get more houses right. so we can prove the model. So, th- Janet, this might be the stepping it stone to be, your Popeyes. Because I am telling you right now, if I have to wait for more than three and a half minutes in the drive through lane at the only McDonald's we have in Middletown to get my mochas in the morning because 180 people are in line in front of me, it is going to get ugly. It's not going to be pretty. Janet, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it this way. You got to go through a little poo-poo <laughs> to get the Popeye. <laughs> All right? <laughs> little poo poo to get to Popeye. But that's, I mean, that's you know, I, hopefully, and that's part of the problem because you, and you see this in all of the little town ships, so to speak, up and down the Shenandoah Valley. We don't want growth. We don't want people moving here or we want people moving here, but we don't want a Popeye's. We don't want a Panera. We don't want a Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> Pick one. Yeah. Either you got to have nobody living there, and therefore you're not going to get any of that commercial growth, or you got to let people move in, but then you better bring with it the commercial growth, because why would they move there if they can't even get groceries? Well, yeah, mean, you get, you got to make sure that EDA is yeah. on point. You got to make sure the supervisors yeah. get their priorities and right. And I mean, and literally in Middletown, so we have, we have a McDonald's, we have a Super 8 hotel, we have a Liberty gas station, we have an Italian restaurant, we have an Irish restaurant. 
We have a couple of car garages, that the mechanics and things like that. We have a barbecue place on the other end of town. And then we have the Middletown Mall, yeah. also known as Dollar General. <laughs> oh, and there's a 7-Eleven. That's it. All that right. literally is all. We have one traffic light. So you've you've got you've got barbecue, Irish, Italian, and the impoverished. You have all the yes. ethnic groups. Oh, and you can buy guns. There's a there's a firearms place, so you can get your gun and walk up and down Main Street and wow. uh, decide where you want to go and eat. So you can buy a gun and rob the dollar store in the same day. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's a town. That and knows if you what do it, it on a day, say, oh, I don't know, maybe when there's a freaking Christmas parade going on, <laughs> you could get away scot free because ain't nobody getting in and out of that town. I, my legal counsel is now looking at me and advised me to tell you that we're not in any way suggesting that anybody should rob any dollar store at any time using any weapon while a Christmas parade is going on. Yes. Christmas parades are for yeah. fun and cheer. Well, and let's just say this isn't all a done deal because mm. there is a lawsuit pending. Really? You wrote it. <laughs> I know, but I forget. I'm covering a lot of stories here. I forgot totally about this. Oh, my goodness. Uh, This progress comes as Village at Middletown LC continues its legal dispute with Middletown in an effort to reduce the proffers it will pay the town. That's right. They're in the middle of negotiations for these proffers. They want to to slash them like in half. It was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So Middletown's not happy about that. And the citizens, I heard, were not happy about that either. So, um, no. we'll, it's, we'll see and see, that's the other cool, that's the other thing that I don't think everybody ever thinks about. So you bring in commercial development, you bring in, you know, your little strip malls with your Paneras and your Starbucks. And, you know, I keep saying those two things because those are the two things. Well, Panera's great. We really, really need. Yeah, I mean, Panera's those fantastic. are the things that that's what we need. Those Popeye's is a, is a close third, but anytime you can, anytime you can get macaroni in a bread bowl. <sighs> Duh. And just like load your or gut. Or cinnamon rolls as big as your head. Oh, oh my lord. Yeah. Oh. So welcome to the first yeah. world. But oh. you bring in that commercial development. Guess what? You don't have to worry about huh. kids. You don't have to worry about educating children. You don't have to worry about paying for schools because these people are stopping on their way to or from somewhere else, or they're people that already live in the area that are already paying their taxes to educate their children at Middletown Elementary School. Well, so that's a good point. So the proffers aren't as in. Just to explain the whole proffer thing, basically a, a proffer is something that the any development pays back to the town to compensate the town for the extra cost it will create by adding to the traffic, by adding to this and adding to that yes. that the town has to maintain. Um, so, but. It, when you get restaurants and we get commercial developments like that and stuff, especially stuff that appeals to transient traffic yeah. that's getting right back on the middle interstate afterwards, you reduce those costs. You do reduce the need for a proffer yeah. and you're still getting from the meals taxes and things like that. But when you're building houses, then you got to worry about who's educating those kids. You've yeah. got all of these other things. That's why tourism is such a phenomenal thing in every single community because those people drive here. They spend a night in a hotel. That's tax dollars going right into the, the locality budget. And they spend money eating and shopping and drinking and doing whatever. And then they leave. We don't have to educate their kids. We don't have to provide them any health care. We don't have to do most of that stuff. So just, you know, put buildings everywhere. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, make the people go away. There's yeah. enough of us in Middletown already. <laughs> and they can't even do a decent job of electing their public officials. Oh, and with that, <laughs> before we go down a rabbit hole, it looks As like we're, one of those people. We're, we're, we're just out of time now. So, <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and take a break. But when we come back from that break, she had I will have called I'm going to I'm going to go reheat my coffee so I can, you know. I might too, chill. actually. My coffee's a little cold. And when we come back from reheating our coffee, it's dumb news time. Dana, I'm going to blow you out of the water. Fine. I don't know. I'm I got, I got a today. gross one and I got a holiday one. I don't know. I've already decided I want gross. Okay. No, I want holiday. No, I want gross. All right, make it a holiday. Maybe I'll do better because I have the right, to just well. keep talking. <laughs> what are you going to do, Turtle Michael? <laughs> so Janet will do both when we go back. <laughs> this morning. Okay. It's an award-winning lunch hour every day at noon with the News at Noon and Valley Today. Listen live on air, online, or on demand at theriver953.com. That's theriver953.com.
Hello, it's Janet again. In addition to producing podcasts for The River 953 and our clients, I also host a show every weekday on the air from 1230 till 1 called The Valley Today. It's a community conversation where I chat with local business owners, nonprofits, government agencies, and residents about what's happening up and down the Shenandoah Valley. You can hear the show live each day on the radio, you can listen live from our website, or you can listen to the podcast of the show each afternoon on our website at theriver953.com from The Valley Today page. You can even subscribe to the podcast in the Apple Podcast app or the Google Play Music Store and have it delivered directly to your phone once it's published. So join me for a conversation this week. And if you're interested in being a guest or advertising in that podcast, send me an email to Janet at the river 953com And now, back to the podcast. Hello and welcome back to some more Another Look. Are you peeking at my, <laughs> are you peeking at my dumb news story? <laughs> I'll show you it's that. It's not like I can, it's hard enough to read upside down, but to read your chicken scratch upside yeah. down is even more difficult. Well, the, the picture is the most important part that I didn't want you to see for my dumb news story. That's right, folks. We're into the big dumb. <laughs> We're in the big dumb news now. Um, I'll show you the picture in a second. I'm just going to read you the headline. I never just read the headline first, but I have to read you the headline because the headline, the second I saw it, I cracked up and I was like, this is great. Okay. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese cops called in to break up drunken brawl by other Japanese cops who were drunk. <laughs> a little redundant, <laughs> but an excellent headline. Well, I don't know. Was it written in Japanese and the translation just didn't? <laughs> I'm guessing that's exactly what happened. Somebody <laughs> threw it into Google Translate and the redundancies. Now, look at the they, – they picked like some stock photo of a Japanese cop with his fists up for this. I just want you to see that real quick. Take a gander. Well, okay. He looks like somebody <laughs> that you may have seen, like, in a very bad MASH episode. Yeah. He looks caricaturish. He yes. looks ridiculous. So, um, uh, right away, I can tell this article's a winner. Now, <laughs> okay. So, then check one. Yeah, check one. <laughs> now, this uh, basically just took place in a restaurant in Akita City, the capital of Japan's northern Akita prefecture. Yeah, prefecture. We all know what that means. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Yeah, I'm sure they probably have a Panera or a Starbucks. In Akita City? That's probably yeah. where this took place. Yeah. Um, it was a group of about 10 men. They're all co-workers. They had been drinking. And instead of, like, being, you know, sleepy drunks or happy drunks or whatever, they start arguing amongst themselves. And eventually the arguments get so intense that they start wailing on each other. One guy walks away from this with broken ribs. <laughs> and they're all cops. And the restaurant owner knows. So he's watching these cops just, like, wailing each other drunk yeah. beyond like, recognition. And what do I do? Because who – yeah, who do you call the cops on? How do you call the cops on cops? You call more cops. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, Janet, uh, you may remember earlier when I said that they were coworkers. Do you remember that earlier? Vaguely, so, yeah. yeah. it was wild. I only listen to every third word, but I think I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coworkers. That one got through. Um, they're more than just coworkers. They work in uh, – the English translation for it is a police box. Now, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's almost like a vending machine of police. Like it, it's basically a little box unit. In it, it's All it is is a reception desk and that's it in the city. And it's basically just so that people, people can feel secure in their section of the city and cops can respond to that section instantly. So they're all in this office. So it's like Domino's Pizza and they're all sitting in a thing waiting for somebody to call and have a cop delivered to them. It's almost exactly like that. Look at it. That's the building. It's like a toll booth. It's like a toll booth. It's like a toll booth full of police officers waiting for somebody to say, hey, I need you. And then they all come running out. It's like a clown car. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, if you're wondering why these 10 cops want to beat the crap out of each other, there's the answer. <laughs> they live in a clown car. They live in a clown car, and one of them takes an hour on the toilet. So, they, that, like, that's all it would take, that, right? There's there's enough room for a toilet in there? <laughs> I, well, and that's the other thing. Maybe they're just bitter because <laughs> they, they, they got to hold it for Because they have a whole bo- uh, another box for a whole different reason. Oh, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Um, so basically what ended up happening is they – because all the cops from that part of that city were taken up in the fight, uh, they had to bring in cops from uh, Go Jome. <laughs> to box it. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> they had to bring cops in from another box, two boxes away. <laughs> Uh, and they broke it up, and it ended up like a guy. Like I said, a guy walked away with broken ribs. 
Um, Internal Affairs is now investigating why these guys uh, all got in this drunken fight. Um, I think I solved it. Uh, <laughs> it's a box. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it just it looks awful. My heart goes out to these guys, and I probably would have been one of them in this fight. Um, I, uh, it, should this be my life? I mean, that's the size <laughs> of my office right there. My whole I think, office. I think you're and right. my office isn't big. <laughs> no, well, it does yeah. have a window that looks out into the hallway. <laughs> I know. I don't even have an outside window. But I yeah. Do. I, I have noticed. two outside windows in a corner office. <laughs> Every time we have a little miniature meeting, I notice. Yeah. So, um, to window Janet, what, what do you All got right. going on? Um, I think we're going to start with the gross one. Gross. And if it re- receives a sufficient uh, reaction from you, then I'm going to save the other one. If it doesn't, I may need to pull it out as a, okay, how about this? <laughs> oh. I got to start working out my uh, my fake reactions. Yeah. And, and I'm trying to do a better job when I find these and, you know, because you do your weird wide web and you do your thing in the mornings with Randy. And I'm always concerned that I'm going to pull a story that you've already covered because, of course, I don't listen to you. So I have no <laughs> idea what you're saying on the There's a the simple mornings. solution to that. But, uh, OK, <laughs> yeah, go on. And yeah. It's not as simple as one may think. It's like living <laughs> in a box. <laughs> so there's the, one of these stories I am fairly certain you would never use on the air for fear of what the public outcry may be. Uh-oh. This one, however, is not it. So, I was going to read you the headline, but I think instead I'm just going to read you the first sentence. Go for it. Um, now, keep in mind, this isn't hepatitis related. However. Oh, this is going to be really gross. A Seattle woman unwittingly injected deadly brain-eating amoeba- amoebas into her nasal cavity. Oh. When she rinsed out her sinuses with tap water. Oh, let that sink no. in for a second. Okay, because our tap water here at the office is awful. And if anyone's got brain eating amoebas <laughs> in their water, it's us. <laughs> That's what Kathy said. She said Dilly's going to freak out this when he one, hears that. This one hits home. So basically, if I don't have the HEP, I've got brain eating amoebas. Yeah. Ugh. So doctors performing brain surgery on the 69 year old woman in January were shocked when what they had initially thought was a tumor based on a CT scan turned out to be a swarm of deadly amoebas munching away at her insides. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's so gross. When I operated on this lady, a section of her brain about the size of a golf ball was bloody mush. Dr. Charles Cobbs, neurosurgeon at Swedish Medical Center, told the Seattle Doesn't Times. Doesn't sound like a neurosurgeon. Yeah. He sounds like a guy on the docks. I know. <laughs> now, when I operate on this lady... It was like a it was like a baseball. This guy sounds yeah. like there were these amoeba all over the place just eating brain cells. This guy <laughs> sounds like not a neurosurgeon. <laughs> this guy sounds like he's recounting an accident he witnessed on the highway. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't have any clue what was going on, but when we got the actual tissue, we could see it was the amoeba. <laughs> I want to see this doctor. I want a picture of this do- this crack squad that discovered. Yeah. So um, this feels like you, fake news. Have man. you ever heard of a neti pot? A neti pot. What's a neti oh, pot? Oh, you're too young for a neti pot. Yeah. So researchers found that the single celled organisms likely infected the woman's brain through her nasal cavity by way of a neti pot. A <laughs> teapot shaped product used to rinse out the sinuses <laughs> about a year earlier. Okay, so here's 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 how it works. So you do this neti pot, and you yeah. put. You're supposed to use saline or sterile water in it, or amoeba water. Yes, apparently in this case, that's what she decided to do. If you really want to um, get your brain clean, and it you put like, and I'm not sure how they work because they gross me out. So I've never actually used one. Yeah, but it has something to do with the fact where you put a tube up your nose with this neti pot. Oh, and then it takes water up your nose through your sinus cavity and then back out the other side and What's it's supposed other, to clear out the your other sinuses. the other nostril? other side of yeah oh so rather than filling up the neti pot with saline or That's sterile water so moronic when you're doing it's it. so disgusting yeah um as is recommended she used tap water filtered through a store-bought filter researchers found but they weren't able to test her tap water to confirm that the balamuthia mandrillaris amoebas were there so they probably don't know. I can picture this doctor going like, use a neti pot. Yeah, that was probably it. Probably in the neti pot. Yeah. So the amoebas can be found in freshwater sources around Puget Sound, but aren't present in city-treated water. 
according to the health department. But, you know, what are they? The, of course, they they're going to they say that. They let people that. work at the Exxon down here with, with the HEP. Yeah. Um, people can't be infected by simply swattering, swallowing water contain, contaminated by amoebas. No, oh, I guess you got to put it up your nose. Uh, I, I don't do that. Yeah. So that's good. So I, I don't have brain eating amoebas, right? Yeah. I'm good? I, I, I don't know. No HEP, no amoebas? I get yeah. Yeah, wow! This was the second ever. This the wow. case is the second ever reported in Seattle. The first was in 2013. It is the first fatality from this kind of infection in the state. Yeah, the woman died. I didn't want to totally oh, harsh your mellow. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't. Mention you didn't that, mention that before, Yeah, Why New not? Jersey health officials linked another kind of brain eating amoeba, Negloria fowleri, to the October death of a man who is believed to have been infected while surfing in an indoor water park. Indoor water park. You just said it right there. That is so disgusting. Now, yeah, I'm sorry. Is I'm going to find you a video of a neti pot just so I can watch you freak I'm, out. I'm, not, I'm curious to work. see it. But yeah. Yeah, I got to ask you this. So this whole brain eating amoeba thing, this has been taking place in New Jersey? Uh, it took place in Seattle. Seattle. Okay. So, Which is one of the scary cases because was... that's where Starbucks is from. Oh, no. I wonder what kind of water they're putting in the mochas there. Well, you can't. You can ingest it. You're safe. Well, I, I mean, if anyone's putting coffee but, uh, in their nose, But that's it's another thing. So you, it's okay to drink water that has amoebas in it, and that won't bother you. It's not a direct but, passage to the but, brain. It goes down the other way. Ah. Because yeah. those amoebas, they don't like the stomach. They love the brain. <laughs> they love, they yeah. love, they go ham on the brain. Okay. Fun fact. Right. So do you want to hear a Christmas story? Yeah, sure. Why not? We got, well, we don't have time, but we never have time. Let's do it. All right, so let me tell you about a little school story, since you know, school has kind of been our theme today. School. An elementary school principal in Nebraska mm. was placed on leave after telling teachers to avoid decorating their classrooms with Christmas-themed ornaments so as not to offend those who don't celebrate the holiday. Classic, like... Again, here yeah. we go. Yes. Classic dilemma. Yes, so teachers reportedly were told that the generic winter-themed items such as sledding and scarves and the frozen character Olaf were acceptable. Decorations that included (laughs) Santa, Christmas trees, reindeer, green and red items, and even candy canes, however, were not acceptable for the elementary school. So no Santa stuff? It's not just like the no no Jesus, Ah. it's no Santa. Oh, but wait, there's more. Ah. The candy canes according to KETV, were prohibited because Sinclair deemed them to have religious significance. They actually do. They represent the shepherd's staff. Historically, the shape is a J for Jesus. Oh, well, that's dumb. The red is for the blood of Christ, and the white is a symbol of his resurrection. Is is all that actually true? I thought it was a shepherd's staff. I thought that's what it... This would also include different colored candy canes. I feel uncomfortable that I have to get this specific, but for everyone's comfort, I will, Sinclair reportedly wrote in the memo. Yeah, I, you just, you're not going to win when you do that. You're not yeah. going to win. So Principal you're, Bands you're Candy so Cane says angry. J shape stands for Jesus. J for Jesus. What would Jesus yeah. eat? He was placed on administrative leave. <laughs> oh. It's Nebraska, man. This, this isn't like L.A. Yes. Wait, what do you think? You, you think you're going to get away with this in Nebraska? Um, the Elkhorn School District told Fox News in a statement that the memo does not reflect the policy of Elkhorn Public Schools regarding holiday symbols in the school. The district's policy states that Christmas trees, Santa Claus, and Easter eggs and bunnies are considered to be secular seasonal symbols and may be displayed as teaching aids provided they do not disrupt the instructional program for students. Yeah, it, it, it's just one of those yeah. things. You're not going to win when you try to ban like little yeah. things like that. I've Although, never heard that about candy canes before. I mean, obviously, yes, they look like a J because I used to joke that that's they invented them for me because my name is Janet. <laughs> I had no idea that Jesus and I had so much in common. They would have been orange if they knew. I yeah. know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be the other thing. But yeah, I'm, su- I, I'm surprised they allowed Olaf's in there because the movie Frozen is like a religion to me. So. <laughs> I, I, Janet, I am such a huge frozen. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh, but okay. So while we're while we're talking briefly about Christmas, mm. um, Nikki Kales was my guest on the Valley Today Wednesday. Yeah, we were talking about the free Christmas movies that they're doing at Royal Cinemas here in Front Royal throughout the month. They are um, on the weekends, and one of those movies is The Polar Express. Now, I heard you guys talk about this on the Valley today, and she talked about it as if it's like a, you haven't seen The Polar Express yet. Oh my goodness, you need to see The Polar. I don't think it's a. 
I don't think it's uh, I haven't seen it. Is it supposed? Is it? It's not Elf for Christ's sake. I, mean, I know it's not I, like you know. It's a good movie, and I think people should see it, especially during this event. I never thought of it as a staple. You yeah, know? I never thought either. of it as like you shouldn't be embarrassed if you haven't seen it. And I this mean, will be a great Tom opportunity. Hanks, to so see I mean, it. everybody should see every Tom Hanks movie he's ever made. But Tom Hanks as a train conductor—that is such Tom Hanks bait right there. <sighs> yeah. I mean, for the Tom Hanks fans uh, out there. Yeah. So, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Um, that's really tough. I have three. <sighs> I you know I'm kind of want to lean towards Christmas Story. Oh, see, that's mine. Just because it's so cla- it's so timeless. Yeah, it's so timeless. What are your other two? Yeah, Elf. Elf's great. I, I mean, we have I, watched it every night this week. Because I can watch AMC Elf has all been the playing time. it every night, and it just so happens after Lester Holt goes off, I need to cleanse the palate, and Elf is on. You know, you know what I would advise before you watch Elf one night, watch The Godfather Part One. <laughs> Because you need that James <laughs> Caan yes! comparison. I never thought of that. You need some Santino, and then you need some children's book publisher, James Caan. Yeah. And you got to see where they weigh out. And you got you also got to do a before and after with the, you know, the, 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 the well, I don't want to give anything yeah. away if you haven't seen Godfather 1. But <laughs> dude is a beast so in yeah. Godfather 1. So, yeah, that one. And then, of course, you know, the classic mm. Christmas Vacation. Christmas vacation, yeah. but see, and the problem for me is like my dad is such a Christmas vacation fan that it's already like played in the house. Like the day after Thanksgiving or the day of Thanksgiving that night, he plays Christmas Vacation, oh, yeah. and it's played so often throughout the house. I can't watch it anymore. Oh, like yeah. I really, I need like a couple of years without it so that I can. I'm get concerned up. that that's Josh's take on a Christmas story because you know they do that 24 uh, hours yeah. of a Christmas story, yeah. and that's the rule. I mean, we have like, like, what are these yeah. broadcasters? They're like children yeah. eating all the candy on Halloween on a Halloween night. I know. I mean, it's I mean, you know now there's Charlie Brown so Christmas. Sick. That's amazing. You know, it's yeah. a wonderful. Life. You the oh my God. That when you, you get yeah, yes, when you consider that one, yeah. that is just kind of phenomenal. Frank Capra is like yeah. killing it. Yeah. And then there are movies that I still don't understand why they're considered Christmas movies. Maybe that'll be maybe instead about... of doing dumb news next week, since it'll be the week before Christmas ish. I don't know when Christmas. Yeah, is. We, so we can do something like that. We can that. do something about Christmas movies and why are they considered Christmas movies? Because Die, Die Hard Hard's one of them. Me. Yeah, yeah. and we, we've talked about that. Randy and I were talking about that too in the morning show because well, you're a listener, so you know. Um, but it, we were talking about Step Brothers. Apparently, was in his holiday movies list. What? There's a scene where it's Christmas, and yeah, yeah and you remember the dad's like depressed. And he's like, "I'm gonna go cheat tape factory oh, as yeah. their opening presents." Yeah, I guess that makes that's it a like movie? at the end of the movie, nearly yeah, because it's dumb. It's dumb. I don't know. I yeah. think they just tried to put it in just to put it in. Yeah. Trying to sell, so everyone's yep. trying to sell something, Janet. Yep. <sighs> but well, uh, yeah. So uh, watch out for your candy canes and your brain eating amoebas. There are. There's a lot of danger this holiday season. Folks, be careful and do not travel to Japan. They're crazy. Yeah, and and they don't go to you. Winchester, Kentucky, and eat it on Applebee's because you'll get the hep. It, you'll get that. <laughs> you will get the hep. So not in quick. Winchester, Virginia, but in Winchester, Kentucky, you'll get the hep. You better watch out. And I know the <laughs> salad bar is delightful. You better not cry. Uh, that's all the time we have. <laughs> Goodbye. It's been another episode of another one.